I have so many people asking me this question or variations of this question. Should I buy a house in 2023? Well, it's just not a one size fits all answer. Damn it, I hate it when that happens. In this video, I'm gonna give you four things to percolate on to help you make the best decision about home buying for you in 2023. Remember back when the interest rate was around 3%? Remember when it hit 2.65 in January of 21? <laughs> yeah, those days aren't coming back. If you didn't buy then, you might be feeling more than a little salty right now that interest rates have basically doubled, but to quote one of my most hated platitudes, it is what it is. Those rates aren't coming back. Do we need a moment of silence to get over it? At the time of recording this video in December of 2022, the Fed is now seeming to back off the size of their federal fund rate hikes, which has led to mortgage interest rates backing down from their 20 year high of 7.08 in October. And we're now settling into mortgage rates in that five to 6% range. None of us has a crystal ball, so I cannot tell you what is going to happen to rates over the next 12 months in 2023, but other experts who also do not have crystal balls predict rates to be between the low fives up to 9% with an average guesstimate of 7%. So what I'm telling you is don't hold your breath. Rates are volatile and they're constantly in flux. At this point, anything in that five to six point range actually sounds pretty good if you're serious about buying a house. In the last few years, the market has been appreciating so rapidly that people didn't need to live in their homes very long before they could sell for a profit. Under normal market conditions, my advice to buyers was, well, why don't you try to stay put for at least three to five years, hopefully five years, before you sold in order to reap the benefits of home appreciation and make a nice little profit while selling. Now, because of the state of the economy and the cooling housing market, I think it would be safer to plan to stay in your house at least five years as a minimum before selling it. Okay, hang on. I need to frame this with a statement. That advice is for people who are looking to their house as an investment, a money-making tool. There's two ways you can look at a home, as an investment or as a necessity, a shelter. When you buy food, a vehicle, clothing, you probably view those things as necessities and you don't expect financial returns from them. A home is unique in that, hopefully, it serves both purposes, necessity and investment. For some people though, the ultimate decision to buy a house is going to come down to the necessity of the shelter and they will weigh it against the cost and the hurdles of renting the type of home where they wanna live or the option of staying wherever they are currently living. The magic ingredient of a home as an investment is appreciation. So the possibility of a flat or declining housing market should not be ignored if making money in the short term is your main goal. If your goals are dual investment and shelter, or your main goal is the necessity of shelter that you control, buying a house in 2023 may still be the right choice for you despite the current housing market. We are no longer in the same seller's market that we saw in 2020, 2021, and part of 2022. But we're not exactly in a buyer's market either. We're kind of living in housing market purgatory. Let me explain. The nation's overall housing supply remains very limited. Yes, the number of listings is slowly rising as houses take longer to sell, but it is in no way enough to satisfy the potential buyer demand out there. U.S. housing inventory is down 42% from where it was in 2019. A factor in the lack of homes on the market is that those who purchased homes in recent years at extremely low mortgage rates, they're staying put. There is no way those people are gonna sell unless they absolutely have to. The tight housing market and housing inventory has kept home prices from seeing the kind of price declines that buyers would have hoped for. Due to rising interest rates, home prices that jumped as much as 30% between 2021 and 2022 in some markets, and the unprecedented level of competition, buyers have just pulled back. At its core, real estate is always a local game. So make sure that you are working with a knowledgeable local real estate agent to help you navigate the market where you are looking to buy a home. 
especially bubbly markets that were hot spots during the pandemic, like Las Vegas, Austin, Boise, Colorado Springs, they are seeing a definite cool off in prices. But it's not the same everywhere. Just because prices have dropped 15% in major California markets doesn't mean that it's happening everywhere. It's not happening here. There are plenty of markets that are still showing year over year price appreciation. A common denominator in these slower but steady markets are that they tend to be mid-sized metros. They are locations that are smaller, they have suburban appeal, and they tout sophisticated urban centers and appeal to remote workers looking to escape those big metros where the cost of living is unattainable. If you're looking to buy, what does this shifting market mean for you? Don't feel pressured to make those snap decisions, but do act with some level of urgency. While bidding wars are no longer the norm in most areas, you can still expect to see competition for desirable properties. Don't assume that you're just the only buyer out there that noticed a real hot ticket of a home. You can make more demands than you could a few months ago, like including contingencies or asking for the seller to contribute to your closing costs. If today's mortgage rates are eating into your budget, you could also ask the seller to buy down your interest rate for the first few years of the loan. Just don't expect to get everything and the moon in your offer. Check out this video that I did explaining how mortgage buy downs work. You shouldn't necessarily expect that any offer you make is gonna just be instantly accepted by a seller. Keep your head screwed on and focus on what your most important asks are. And definitely work with your agent to create an offer that puts you in the driver's seat, but it doesn't shoot you in the foot. Number four, take a good look at your finances. If you've decided that 2023 is your year to buy a house, how should you prepare? Well, talk to a mortgage lender, even if you think you're still a ways out from writing that offer. I highly recommend going with a local lender. In more cases than not, a local lender will end up being a better deal for you than a national lender or an internet lender. Your lender is gonna take a look at your overall financial picture, possibly give you some things to work on during the interim and counsel you on what your monthly payments will look like at various price points. Ask your lender what you can do to improve your credit score because following through on those action items will help you get the best rate and terms from your lender, which is more important than ever in this era of higher interest rates. Improving your credit score and the interest rate that you qualify for is going to save you hundreds of dollars a month, possibly on your mortgage payment. The point of this conversation with your lender should be for your clarity and to help you put yourself in a position to make decisions when the time is right. Don't you agree that knowing these things before you're chomping at the bit to buy a home would help you? During the period when you're biding your time to make an offer, avoid hard credit pulls. If you want to shop lenders, Try to keep all of that activity condensed within the period of a few weeks because that way it will not count as multiple credit pulls. However, avoid other hard credit inquiries as much as possible, such as financing a new car, on opening a new credit card, doing things like applying for a new cell phone. Work on saving your money. This seems like a no brainer, but it should be said. You're going to use this for your down payment, your closing costs, and expenses involved with making a home purchase, such as your earnest money deposit, your inspections, and costs associated with the actual physical task of moving all of your stuff from one location to another. It is a myth that you need 20% down to buy a house, but it does come with benefits. Discuss these with your lender. Take a hard look at your budget. Track your real numbers for a few months to get a true picture of what you're spending across the board. Car payments, childcare, gym memberships, personal grooming, food, you know, all the things, big and small that add up. Compare that with your monthly take home income in order to get a feel for what you would be comfortable with spending for your future housing. What you're pre-approved for and what you're comfortable spending may be two different things. They may not be one and the same. You are the only person who is going to be able to actually know what is a comfortable fit for your monthly mortgage payment. Rules of thumb and lending formulas may not fit your preferences. 
Once you have this number, you can go back to your lender and ask them to rerun their numbers to reverse engineer what the price bracket is that you should be shopping in order to stay within your comfort zone. For instance, if you had been approved for say 400,000, but you're really only comfortable spending $2,000 a month on a mortgage payment, you'll discover that you should actually be shopping houses more in that $330,000 range. This number is assuming a couple of things such as 20% down, a 6% interest rate, and property taxes that are comparable to where I live here in Iowa City. Are you thinking about making a home purchase in 2023? Tell me about it in the comments section down below. If you'd like to talk with me about buying, selling, or relocating in the greater Iowa City area, you can find all of my contact information in the description box of this video down below. If you're watching this on your phone, just tap the title of the video and it's gonna open right up for you. Hey, it's been fun and I'll catch you later.